Hi, my name is Fanta Reichler. I'm a training librarian at the Faculty of Arts and Humanities Library of the Université de Neuchâtel. Today, I will talk about the use of playful learning in the context of an academic library. I will explain why the use of such practice is relevant, what we achieved in our library, and what we are aiming at in the future. To begin with, I need to explain the notion of information literacy. The UNESCO defined it as the capacity of people to recognize their information needs, locate and evaluate the quality of information, store and retrieve information, make effective and ethical use of information, and apply information to create and communicate knowledge. In the academia, it represents multiple skills that students and researchers need to harness throughout their courses, such as mastering simple and advanced search databases or online catalog in order to find articles or books, evaluating what information they need, determining what type of document contains that information, using multiple sources for their work, citing those sources, etc., etc. As you may have noticed, the skills I mentioned all relate to information, and more precisely to documents, or to use, search, evaluate, and share them. Now, there is something very important that you must keep in mind. It turns out that librarians love documents. And that is why academic library traditionally handles the promotion and the instruction of information literacy for students and researchers. Our library makes no exception. We are indeed the central hub for information literacy promotion in our faculty. We offer multiple services on that topic. Here are the most important ones. First, we have a library orientation visit destined for new students where we show the different parts of our collection, explain what services they can use and how to use our library catalog. Then we have a two hour mandatory introduction course that we teach each year to approximately 350 first year students. Here we talk about documentary research strategies, how to access physical and electronic resources and bibliographic citation. Finally, we have a two-hour discipline-specific advanced course destined for graduate students. The subjects are the same as in the introduction course, but we focus more on discipline-specific resources that they will use on a daily basis. While we are glad to have opportunities to reach many parts of our community, we noticed an important drawback. The younger part of our audience lacks personal involvement, intrinsic motivation, and in the long run, they might not remember all the essential information we try to convey. In order to address this issue, and more generally to improve the way we train people, we started reflecting on integrating playful learning in the services we offer. And by playful learning, I mean all that relates to gamification, game-based learning, and serious games. What seems interesting to us is the blend of motivational triggers, active learning, and social learning those methods raise. There is also a growing community of practice in school and academic libraries around the world on which to draw. Early 2019, we directed a bachelor thesis from a documentary information student, which brought several playful learning scenarios forward. We choose to implement two of them. The first one is the creation of an information literacy activities toolbox. It contains 15 playful activities that training librarians can implement in introduction and advanced courses in order to replace classic library instruction exercises. The toolbox contains activities such as card sorting games, direct feedback tools, interactive quiz tools, storytelling concepts, word puzzles, icebreakers, and assessment games. We started including those in the 2019 Anton Introduction Courses session. Training librarians were free to include as many activities as they wanted. We also included a heavier serious game in some advanced courses. It is an information literacy quiz game called SICK. It was developed by a fellow librarian, Andrew Walsh, from the University of Huddersfield. The second scenario consisted in replacing our classic library orientation by an escape game or a scavenger hunt. We studied multiple options and due to a lack of time and material resources, we postponed the creation of the escape game and chose to concentrate on the scavenger hunt. We created three different paths with different storytelling elements for each of them. Students had to browse through the library, search the online catalog, look for clues hidden inside book covers and solve puzzles. At the end of the game, all participants were rewarded with university goodies. In both cases, feedback were genuinely positive, but there are a few points that we feel need to be improved. First, we are going to update the toolbox with new activities, and we might even design heavier serious games like the one I mentioned earlier. 
Then, for the next academic year, we will set an alternate form of escape game instead of the library orientation. It is called a breakout game, where player needs to open a box with multiple locks to finish the game instead of escaping a room. We will use a service called Breakout Edu. They sell fully adaptable breakout game kits and extensive online training resources. On the longer term, we are willing to establish common practices and guidelines for teaching librarians across the whole university. In conclusion, all this is the first step towards an idealistic, playful library. I know that there is still a lot more to explore, a lot more to experiment, but we saw that with a bit of support from our parent institution and with an inspired and inspiring worldwide community of practice, we can build sustainable and creative projects.